Hi guys, Marvin here from shopshadowpage.com and today we're going to do an unboxing and review of the Magic Force Smart 68 Mini Mechanical Keyboard from Banggood.com. We're also going to compare two versions of this keyboard with the word only and a dual mode version. With that said, let's get into it. Alright guys, so right here I have the packaging for the Magic Force Smart 68 Mini Mechanical Keyboard and I actually have two of these with the other one being the Bluetooth version. So this is the wired version which is the Smart 1 and this is the dual mode version Smart 2. We're going to compare both these versions and see what fits your needs in relation to your budget. They both look the same at the surface but they actually differ in a lot of ways. With that said, let's start with the Smart 1 wired version. At the side of the box, we have the product specifications, system requirements, and the package contents as well as the switch variant and in this case, we have the Gatron Brown version. At the back of the box, we have more information about its key features that we're going to tackle in depth later. And that's pretty much it around the box of the Smart 1 wired version. For the Magic Force Smart 2 dual mode version, at its side, we just have the switch variants and it looks like what we have here is another Gatron Brown variant. At the back of the box, we have the same information regarding this keyboard's product features. So we're going to start the unboxing with this one and later we'll compare it with the wired version. Alright, so the first thing you'll notice out of the box is the Magic Force Smart 2 keyboard itself protected with clear plastic. Then we have here the quick start guide, a quite substantial one which is nice. And then we have on the side another small box, inside it we have the USB Type-C cable with gold plated connectors. And it looks like that's pretty much it for this one. It doesn't come with a keycap puller unlike most mechanical keyboards that I've tried before. Next, let's take a look at the Smart 1 wired version here. First thing out of the box is the quick start guide which is significantly smaller and simpler than the dual mode version as you can see here. And it actually makes sense because the dual mode has a lot more features than the basic wired mode. Next we have the keyboard itself protected by the same plastic protection here. And then on the side we have here the cable that unfortunately is mini USB. Although it's also gold plated it is significantly older than the reversible USB type C cable that's on the dual mode version. Now surprisingly the wired version comes with the plastic keycap puller right here. Alright guys, let's take a closer look at the dual mode version here. At first look and feel, it does pack a decent weight to it of around 601 grams and the build quality feels solid enough without any flex at all no matter how hard I try. And I think it is because of the combination of the thick aluminum backplate and the hard plastic bottom housing. In front, we have a Magic Force logo right here and around the keyboard, we have these nice shiny chamfered edges that adds up to the overall premium look of this keyboard. On the front side, we have a clear view of the relatively slim bottom housing here. Flipping it on its side, as you can see, the bottom housing has this angled shape for that usual ergonomic form factor. It also features floating keys design which means half of the switches are visible. Now the keycaps profile is Cherry MX profile which is shorter than the usual OEM profile. Turning it on the back side, we can see here the cutout for the cable routing channel as well as an idea on how thick the back side is compared to the front side. Flipping it all over the back, we have 4 rubber feet and then 2 adjustable stand that has a pretty substantial rubber tip as well to make this keyboard stay in place. Aside from that, we have the usual technical information at the center as well as the USB Type-C port nicely tucked on this area right here. Going back in front, in terms of layout, it is using the ANSI standard layout with the 68 key design. So we have 4 additional keys here for some of the nav cluster keys as well as dedicated arrow keys right here. The only omission I can see here is that we don't have the menu key that is otherwise available besides the right control key. Now in terms of the fonts used, we have large fonts for the alphas with sub-legends up top for the secondary functions like these media keys right here. The modifiers on the other hand feature smaller font which I think complements well with the alphanumeric characters. Now let's take a quick look at the wired version. Both versions look pretty much the same on the surface but this one is significantly lighter with a weight of around 540 grams and it is also slightly inferior in terms of build quality in contrast with the dual mode version but it is still pretty solid overall. Like I said, it looks exactly the same with the dual mode version with the Magic Force logo and chamfered edges. It is inferior to the dual mode version in terms of rigidity because this one is slimmer than the other version. But like I said on its own, the word version is still pretty solid. Flipping it on its side, it also features the same angle design with floating keys and it also has the same Cherry MX profile keycaps. Another difference is that the cutout for the cable routing channel is at the dead center compared to the dual mode version that has the cutout on one side. Turning it at the back, we have here the same 4 rubber feet. Two adjustable stands with rubber tip and the mini USB port nicely tucked as well but just in a different location compared to the dual mode version. We also have the usual technical information at the center and a dedicated DIP switch on the left side. Going back in front, the layout is pretty much the same, ANSI standard with extra keys for the nav cluster and dedicated arrow keys. The difference is aside from the color of the keycaps, it also doesn't have some of the sub-legends that the dual mode version has. 
Notice that the extra 4 keys on the right side are different as well, with the wired version having a dedicated insert key while the dual mode version has the dedicated tilde and back quote keys. So here's both the keyboards side by side so that you can have an idea how they differ from each other. As I said, they look pretty much the same on the surface with the same size and layout. This one is heavier and better in terms of build quality compared to this one which is lighter. Flipping both of them side by side as you can see here, the bottom housing of the dual mode version is thicker but with just the same thickness for the aluminum backplate. Turning them both all over at the back, we can clearly see the difference in terms of the placement of their ports. The wired version has a DIP switch at the back while the dual version has an on and off switch on its side for the Bluetooth connectivity. Alright guys, with most comparisons out of the way, let's focus our attention on the dual mode version right here. Again, the layout is ANSI standard with some of the nav cluster keys and dedicated arrow keys. Now, the colorway of the keycaps on this variant is RGBY or red, green, blue, and yellow as you can tell, with color white with the alphanumeric keys and gray with the other modifiers. In terms of the keycaps, it is made of durable PBD plastic with die sublimated characters. And since it is a die sub keycap, it is not double shot but is still pretty thick at around 1.4mm. Naturally, PBT keycaps will not shine that easily compared to ABS keycaps and that it has a nice rough texture on it. The characters will also not fade away because it is already a part of the keycap plastic through the die sublimation process. Another good thing here is that you won't feel the characters at all unlike pad printing or even with some razor edge keycap. Now in terms of the switches, both these keyboards have got a brown switch which is tactile and has an actuation force of 45 grams. But since it has a tactile bump, albeit very subtle compared to Cherry MX Brown, it feels a little bit heavier than a 45 grams linear red switch. Gutteron Brown is actually my favorite switch because it is a good middle ground between the linear red switch and the clicky blue switch. So essentially, it is good for both typing and gaming as it will provide you with enough feedback for typing while still allowing you to press it easily for fast key presses during gaming. Now it is up to you to choose because both these keyboards are available in blue, brown, and red Gutteron switches. In terms of the stabilizers, the word version is significantly rattly on almost all its stabilized keys like the backspace, left and right shift, and spacebar. As per checking, it looks like the stabs on this keyboard doesn't have any factory lube at all. On the other hand, the Bluetooth version stabilizers are very smooth and as per checking, the stabilizers have some factory lube on them. It's amazing how much difference lube makes to the overall feel of the switches and the stabilizers of a mechanical keyboard. Now before we move on, let's do a quick typing test so that you can have an idea of how both these keyboards sound. Moving on, let's turn on this keyboard by using the dedicated power switch at its side right here. Even though the die sub keycaps are not shining through, this keyboard still features white LED illumination. Interestingly, both these keyboards are not using SMD LEDs or surface mounted LEDs that we typically see on most budget keyboards. Instead, the LEDs are on top of the switches but still soldered down on the board. The advantage of this implementation is that it is significantly brighter than SMD LEDs and is probably easier to replace than SMD LEDs. However, this makes replacing the mechanical switches rather hard since you also have to desolder the LEDs as well. Both these keyboards have top-mounted LEDs but they are using different types as you can see here. Aside from the LEDs on the switches, we also have three LED indicators right here above the arrow keys. The first one is for battery indicator, the second one is for cup slot, and the third one is for connection mode so that you can have an idea what device it is currently connected with by using four different colors including yellow for the wired mode. For the charging LED indicator, green light is charging, off is full charge, and flashing is for low battery. 
Now before we check out the different lighting effects, let's discuss the layers real quick here. So using the function key, you can toggle the function keys up top as well as the multimedia keys here at the bottom and the print screen, scroll lock, and other keys that otherwise available in a complete nav cluster. However, some of the keys are redundant because you already have them here. Alright, so for the lighting effects, you can adjust the brightness by pressing F and plus down or up arrow keys with up to 10 levels. You can toggle the 9 different lighting effects by pressing F and plus the greater than key. As usual, let's breeze through all of them here. Aside from that, you can also change the speed of the animation by pressing F and plus left or right arrow keys. Now for the wide version, the lighting effects are quite basic. You can adjust the brightness by pressing F and plus down or up arrow keys but you only have two lighting effects, breathing and static which you can toggle by pressing F and plus left arrow key and F and plus the right arrow key to adjust the speed of the animation and that's about it. Now here's how the illumination looks in a dim environment. And since the wide version doesn't have a dedicated LED indicator, the caps lux LED is within the key itself and if you toggle it, it will stay lit even if you have breathing effect turned on. And now, here's how the illumination for the dual mode version looks like in the same dim environment. I don't know if you can tell but for me, the dual mode version's illumination is brighter compared to the wired mode. Alright, before we move on to the wired version, let's discuss the Bluetooth feature of the dual mode version. To pair this keyboard to your device, all you have to do is press F and press Q. W or E for 3 seconds until the LED indicator starts flashing. Open up your device's Bluetooth settings. In this case, I am using a Windows 10 PC. Click Add Bluetooth Device, enter the pairing code using the keyboard, press Enter, and you're good to go. Once you connect this keyboard to multiple devices, you can easily switch between them by pressing F and plus the corresponding key. You can also change to wired mode to save energy or for low latency gaming by pressing F and plus R. We'll talk more about the performance later. Moving on, let's focus now on the wired version. I know this video is going to be long but I really want to show you guys all the difference between these two versions so that we'll leave no information behind. In terms of the fonts, we don't have here the sub-legends for the Bluetooth connectivity for obvious reasons but you also have the multimedia layers, nav cluster layer, and the function rows up top. Aside from that, you basically have the same functions and legends as the dual mode version. Like I said, it doesn't have any LED indicators but what it does have that the dual mode version doesn't is a dedicated DIP switch at the back. You can use this switch to interchange the function of some modifiers like caps lock, left control, windows key, and the function key. I'll pop the table on the screen so that you can check it out. This feature is actually useful if you want to toggle the function rows up top using your left hand by switching the windows key to F and key. It is worth noting though that as per the manual, you have to unplug the keyboard first before toggling the DIP switches. Another interesting feature of the wired mode that the dual mode version doesn't have is the adjustable key speed function which you can toggle by pressing F and plus W, E or R with 20C per second, 40C per second and 60C per second respectively. As per my research, it has to do with polling rate or something like that. Basically, when you press and hold a key, it will continuously activate it on and off at the rated speed it was set on. Think about something like the turbo button on a Game Boy. In my testing, it was causing stuttering during movements in CSGO which obviously is not the application for it. But to be honest, I cannot think of any useful use case scenario for this feature. Maybe you can give a suggestion on the comments below. Alright guys, before you move on to the performance part of this review, here's a quick size comparison so that you can have an idea how this unique compact size differs from the others. Now when it comes to the NKRO performance of these keyboards, for the dual mode version in Bluetooth mode, it has 6 key rollover which allows you to press up to 6 keys at the same time without conflicts. Connecting it via wired allows you to have full NKRO which allows you to press as many keys as you want without any conflicts. So if the things you do don't require more than 6 keys to be pressed at the same time, then you should be fine even on Bluetooth mode. The wired version as expected has full NKRO. Now in terms of gaming, the Bluetooth version is more than capable. It doesn't have any perceivable latency even on wireless mode and the stabilizers especially in the spacebar is really good and nice in terms of feel whenever you jump. However, the wired version, although good as well for gaming overall, the rattly spacebar is sometimes kinda annoying. In terms of the switch for gaming, the Gatorm Brown switches on both of these keyboards, although it has a tactile bump, doesn't get in the way of pressing the keys as fast as you can. 
Now, most gamers I know prefer linear switches, and others even prefer linear speed switches like the Cherry MX Speed Silver or Kale Speed Silver. But it doesn't mean that the Gutter Brown is not good for gaming. It will just boil down to your personal preference. Now, another thing that's worth noting here on both of these compact keyboards for gaming is that you don't have dedicated function rows, and I find that a little bit of a hassle when function keys are necessary on some games. So that's something you have to take in mind. On the other hand, one good advantage of a compact keyboard like this is that you have more real estate for your mouse to move around. Overall, both these keyboards are pretty decent for gaming. Now, when it comes to the typing experience, which is one of the most important thing here, although both these keyboards have gotten switched, they actually differ quite significantly in terms of overall feel. And that is due to the difference with the quality of their stabilizers. Like I said earlier, the wired version stabilizers are not pre-lubed and are quite rattly. And that of course translates to the typing experience. Though the Gatron switches are very smooth, the stabilizers are not. On the other hand, the Bluetooth version is just better when it comes to overall typing experience thanks to its pre-lubed stabs. I would also like to add that both these keyboards dice up PBT keycaps are very good and adds up to the overall feel of the keyboard, especially on the Bluetooth version. It feels good with a bit of texture and you will not feel the dice up legends compared to let's say keycaps with bad printing. In terms of battery life, the Magic Force Smart 2 Dual Mode version has a 3500 mAh battery which is massive for a mechanical keyboard. In contrast, the Unpro 2 only has 1900 mAh battery and the Rocklam Ang Pro has 2000 mAh battery. As of the time making this video, it hasn't died on me yet with over 13 hours of usage. I'll probably post an update later for the total battery endurance of this keyboard. And lastly, I'm not 100% sure but as of this time of making this video, I cannot find the link to the software for any of these two keyboards. I'll probably post an update if I find any or you can also give me a heads up on the comments below if there's actually a software for these two keyboards. So to conclude, both these keyboards prove to be very decent especially the dual mode version. Both of them are solidly built with the dual mode version having a slight advantage with the thicker bottom housing. Both of them have the very smooth gutteron switches but the wide version stabilizers is significantly rattly compared to the pre lube stabs of the dual mode version. They both feature the same design and layout for the most part, with the dual mode version having dedicated LED indicators and a power switch and is using a more recent USB Type-C compared to the outdated mini USB on the wired version. The wired version on the other hand has DPI switch and adjustable key speed feature. Both of them have illumination with the dual mode version having more lighting effects. Overall, it will just boil down to your budget. If budget is not an issue then I definitely recommend going for the dual mode version to get the full feature of the Magic Force Smart 68 mini mechanical keyboard. But if you just simply want the unique compact form factor of this keyboard and you have a tight budget, then the wired version is sufficient enough. If you're interested to get this keyboard, you can purchase this from Banggood.com and ordering from them is actually pretty easy like most online shopping websites out there. Once you're at the product page, just choose the variant, add to cart, view cart and checkout, and then click on proceed to checkout wherein you will input the voucher code here provided in the description below. Click apply, choose the payment method, and then you can proceed with placing your order. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching, make sure to check the full article link below. Thanks again to Banggood.com for sending this in and for their continued support to this channel. Again, you can use the link and voucher codes below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day! Thank you.